Forwarding an email message is just like it sounds. It's taking a previous email that was sent to you and sending it off or forwarding it on to somebody else. So for example, I got a new email here from Kerry. With it selected, I can come over here in the reading pane, get a preview of it. There's the subject, New Ghost Investigation, and she wrote, Hi Kurt. We got an opportunity to investigate the haunted old mill this Friday night at 6 p.m. Ooh, spooky. And so you can see up here that she only sent it to one person. That would be me. And let's say that I want to be able to invite Mr. Humphreys. Well, I could go ahead and create an entirely new email message and then copy and paste the contents of this over into it or retype it, which is a waste, especially if I can just come up here and click on forward. And when I do that, it copies over the subject and the body of the original message here. So click on forward. There's the subject and it's got FW in front of it to let Mr. Humphrey knows that this isn't the original message, but it's been forwarded on from, you can see down below, Carrie Heffernan. And when she sent it to me and the subject and then what she wrote me. And so I can just come up here and type in his email address and W, there it is. With it highlighted, hit the tab key and then down below, Hey, Mr. Humphreys, are you free? And when he sees that, well, if this wasn't a dead giveaway, that it, there's more to the message than what I wrote because it's been forwarded on, then when he sees it down below after he opens it up because maybe he missed the FW, he can go, oh, well, there's more down and it's from Carrie and she wrote to Kurt about the ghost investigation this Friday night. Are you free? Oh, of course. Now, you can do it that way, but you can also, if you want to make this an original message, as it were, you can actually come up here and delete the FW and delete who it's from originally here and then type over the names like, hi, Kurt, and say, hi, Mr. Humphreys, and then replace the sincerely carry with sincerely Kurt and, you know, plagiarize, make it your own. But hey, Outlook is only used for good. So let's go ahead and hit undo, but you can do that if it helps you out to speed things up because maybe you don't want them to know who the original sender was and it was going to be a surprise party in any case. When you're ready, just go ahead and click on send and away it goes. Now, as you recall in the previous training video on replying in the reading pane, you can discard it. If you do that, it moves it over to the deleted items folder, select it, and there it is. You can double click to open it back up. And it's got the message here that we typed in originally before we threw it away. Then we can go ahead and click send and away it goes. Or let's go ahead and close out, go back to the inbox, and then go ahead and click on forward again. And then the other option is to do a pop out and it gives you more room horizontally if you need more room. And then type in who it's to, well, Mr. Humphreys, and then your message. Hey, we want you to come. And go ahead and close out of that. Let's not save that. Now you can do it over in the reading pane. But like we covered in the previous training video, when it came to replies, you can also do it over here by either right-clicking on the message itself and in the shortcut menu, select forward, opens it up over in the reading pane, in which case you can pop it out or discard it. I'll discard it. You can do it that way, or you can come up here on the home tab to the respond group, and there it is as well. Click on forward or double-click to open up the message itself and click on forward there. And then go ahead and type in everything. And hit the tab key and then say, and then when you're done, click send. And after you click send, in the original message, it shows that I forward this message on at that date and that time. And let me go ahead and close out of that so we can come back here so I can show you that the icon column, when you hover over that piece of paper, in that column, you've got these letters here. As you recall in the previous training video, the letter with the arrow pointing to the left, as a reference, you can come up here on the home tab to the respond group, the arrow pointing to the left, means that you replied. And in this case, pointing to the right, the blue, means that you forwarded it on. So if I'm like, ooh, did I forward this on to Mr. Humphreys? Well, yes, you can see the indicator there with the message still in the inbox. And with it selected, you can come over here and it gives you the date and time. You forwarded this message on this date and that time. And of course, you got the more arrow. You can click on it to get more information here. I'm gonna collapse that. If you're like, well, who did I forward it on to? Remember. Every time you send off an email message, whether it's an original message, a message that you replied to, or in this case forwarded it, it creates a copy of it and stores it over in the sent items folder so you can select it. And then there it is, FW forwarded, new ghost investigation, and who it's to, Mr. Humphreys. But if it's being cut off, you can double click, or if there's additional email addresses, because you can include more than one email address in a forward, that it would list them all here. And of course, you can expand that to get the details and collapse that to give you more room. Let's go ahead and close out of that and go back to our inbox. 
Now, as I discussed in the previous training video, that when you get messages that have attachments, let's do this one right here. You can see the paper clips. When I look over here in the reading pane, yay, we've got five attachments here. That when you click reply, it removes the attachments. Because when I re reply back to Carrie, what's the purpose of sending back something that she already has? Unless, of course, I want to go ahead and make some changes before I send them off. But the reply option isn't going to work. If you want to keep all this and send it back to her, I think the quickest way to do that, or in this case, to forward it on to somebody else, is to do the forward because the forward keeps all the attachments. When you click forward, there's all the attachments, the original email message, go ahead and type in who it's to. In any case, discard that. And when you click reply, remember, it removes all the attachments. Let's discard that. Also, you can use the preface comments with feature as we covered in the previous training video. In other words, when I select this and I click on forward, if there's a lot of information that I want to go to in greater detail and not type it all up at the top, but in reference to maybe all the statements or questions that Carrie sent to me, because again, I don't want to do more work than is necessary, I can, when I send this off to Mr. Humphreys, type in something that says, please see my comments below. And so down below, I can go ahead and type in my comments next to all the questions or statements that Carrie made, and I can preface those comments with my name. And this can be done by using the preface comments with feature. And to do that, let's discard that. As you recall in the previous training video, come up here, click on the File tab, go down to Options, and then select the Mail tab. And you can either come over here and click on Stationery and Fonts, and then go ahead and check Mark My Comments with KK. When you check that and you click OK, you can also scroll down here to replies and forwards and check preface comments with KK. But since I already checked it in the other window before I came to this one, well, when I click OK and I come back, this will be checked. Because when you do it in one place, it updates the other. So if I go ahead and click OK, then I come back and I go File, down to Options, Select Mail. I mean, remember I checked it in Stationery and Fonts. You see it's right there, Mark My Comments with KK, which you can come in here. And instead of using your initials, as I'm doing in my case, I can type in Kurt and click OK. But when you scroll back down to here, replies and forwards, it checks the preface comments with, well, it's KK, but since I updated it in the other window, it'll update it here. That is after I click OK. Click OK. So when I go ahead and click on forward, and I come up here and I say, please see my comments below. Once I get below the line here of the original email message, or this could be a forward of a forward of a forward. In any case, once I get below the line and I go next to like one of the statements or the questions and I start typing saying yes, that will automatically preface my comments with in square brackets, my name or you can go back and change it to your initials. And this will happen wherever you click. And even when you hit the Enter key, it automatically inserts my name again, and I can just start typing. That way I'm able to easily address each statement or question, if there's more than one here, that is, in the original message with my comments and not have to come up here and then type in, well, for this question, I want to reply here and retype the question. Now, it's a lot easier, at least for me, to go ahead and just say, please see my comments or responses below. And then it starts it off with my name. And that can be very helpful because when I send it on to Mr. Humphreys, and then he turns his on, the preface comments with feature, and he tags it with his comments below mine. Well, if he forwards it on to somebody else, then they do that and it gets back to Carrie. She can go ahead and look at all the comments to see who made them. And it would be Kurt, and then Mr. Humphreys, if he wants to use his initials, WF, whatever his flavor is. In any case, when you're done, you don't want to use this feature anymore. Well, let's just discard that. Of course, you can come back up here, click on File, go down to Options, click on the Mail tab. Again, Stationery and Fonts, and uncheck it there, or just scroll down and uncheck it here. And then click OK, because what you do in one, it does in the other. Again, File, down to Options, Mail. Whew, that's a lot of work. Stationery and Fonts. And then there you can see it's been unchecked here as well. So OK, OK. And then when I go ahead and click on Forward, and I just come down below the line and start typing, it doesn't preface my comments with my name. 
Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.